This is map 151. We are going to take a look at section 4.3, which are about uh, maximum and minimums. Maxima and minima. Um, sometimes these are just called extreme points, uh, extrema. And what they are is they're just maximums and minimums. So like if I have a graph that looks like this, say, this right here is the absolute lowest point on it. So this is the, this is the minimum value. Um, and this is, since it's the absolute lowest point of the whole graph, it ends here and here, then we say that's the global minimum. And if I go to the highest point on the graph, right here, that's our global maximum. Um, sometimes they're also called global, sometimes they're also called uh, absolute. I prefer global. Um, but there's some other uh, values on here as well. Like if I look at this value right here, this is this is a minimum, but it's a minimum in its neighborhood, right? If I just think about locally, I don't look at the whole graph, but I just look at like around where that point is at. This is a, a local minimum. And you can see I have a local maximum here as well. There's no other higher point around it. And I have another local max right here to this endpoint happens to be one. Uh, if I had a graph that, let's say it starts here, it goes down, and then it's open-ended here, right? So that would be like a less than but not equal to. This this has no, no absolute minimum. And, and we can't really determine uh, where the minimum is at because this gets closer and closer to that value but never touches it. So here's a statement. If uh, some function f has local extrema at c, so local extrema, right, like on both sides, um, and f is differentiable at c, right, like we can find its derivative, then the derivative at that point is zero. Now this is not talking about endpoints on a graph. This is talking about it's within an interval. So like this local maximum right here, notice that if we take the derivative, like the, the slope of the tangent line is, is zero there, and it's zero there as well. So if f has a local extrema at c, f is differentiable at c as well, then the derivative at c of that function f is equal to zero. Now notice this is a one-way implication. And, and what I mean by that is if all this stuff is true, then this is true. It, I'm not claiming that it goes the other direction. I'm not saying if if uh, the, the derivative is zero, then it is necessarily a local extrema. That, that's a different statement. This is a one-way statement. This is just saying if it if there is an extreme, it's differentiable at that point, then the, then the derivative at that point is, is zero. The graph of a cubic. Notice like at zero, Derivative is zero at zero, but that is not a local max or min. This thing is increasing this whole time. So it's not a two-way implication. In other words, if it is an extrema, then the slope is uh, zero. But if the slope is zero, it is not necessarily a max or min. So how do we find them? And what we can do is we can take advantage of this Uh, again, if f, if f is continuous, we're going to assume this function is continuous over some interval, right? Like this would be i right here. Uh, the first claim I'm going to make is that um, absolute max and mins must occur either at endpoints or at critical points. And critical points are when the derivative is zero or undefined. Now, again, what I'm saying is... Um, if there is an absolute max or min, it either occurs at an endpoint or when the derivative is zero or undefined. I'm not saying if this happens, it is necessarily an extreme max min, or if it is an endpoint, it is an extreme, uh, a global max min. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's where it can happen.
All right, so here's a function. Um, f of x is negative x squared plus 3x minus 2 on this interval, 1, 3. So this, this is, we're going to let x run from 1 to 3. Um, and so let's use what we can to find the max and mins. So first off, I'm going to take the derivative of that function. And then I'm going to think, when is that equal to 0? So um, that would be... That would be at three halves. Um, so that's the only place at zero. It's always defined. It's not undefined anywhere. Like I'm not dividing by zero. I don't have that opportunity or square root of a negative. So there's my critical point. And my other possibilities are my endpoints. My endpoints are when x is one or x is three. So now all we have to do really is like check which one of those are the lowest and which one of those are the highest of the points. So. Um, I'll go f of 1, and if I plug that into this equation, boop, 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 it spits out a 0. I'll go f of 3 halves. If I plug that in, I can just shove it into my calculator. Uh, it spits out a 1 fourth. And f of 3, if I plug in 3, shove that in my calculator again, it gives me a negative 2. So it looks like this is the highest that it will get. So there's a global max, or an absolute maximum. Happens at 3 halves. Notice that happened when the derivative was 0. And uh, negative 2, it happens there as well. So that, um, sorry, that's the lowest point. So that would be my global or absolute minimum uh, when x is negative 2. So there, I've, uh, I found them. Let's, let's take a peek at a graph of this and see what that, what that does for us. All right, so here's that graph bounded between one and three. And notice, yeah, there's our, our global minimum. The lowest it gets there is when x is three, and the highest it gets here is when x is 1.5 or three halves. So yeah, that, that shows it exactly. So same question, let's look at this function uh, g, and uh, let's find its max mins. So first thing I'm gonna do is take the derivative of it. 2x, 3's divide out. So it is uh, that, right? And, and that's equivalent to, um, could write this a couple of ways. And if I wanted to get manipulate that a little bit, um, I could also think of this as equal to this. All that I did was I found a common denominator and, and did the subtraction. So like this already has cube root, which is x to the one third. So if I multiply this by that, notice that this is x to the four thirds. So two x to the four thirds minus two over the cube root of x. So if I think about that, I have a, a undefined point here when x is zero. So there's one critical point. Uh, also, if I set this equal to zero up top, x would be one. So there's my two critical points. I also have my, my endpoints. Oh, plus or minus one. Yeah, plus or minus one. Because I'm taking it to the fourth power, so a negative one would, would work there as well. Um, zero, blah, 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 and two. So, and, and there's my endpoints. So, and that endpoint matches up with that. So let's, let's test them all and see what happens. So if I plug zero into this, uh, it's just zero. And again, I'm plugging it back into the original equation, right? Because I want to know the height of the original equation. Uh, if I plug in one for this, this is one squared minus three. So that's a negative two. A negative one. Oh, I can throw a negative one out because that's not in the range right? Like it's only zero to two. So I can throw out negative one. So let me check two. If I plug a two into here, this is two squared minus uh, three times two to the two thirds. Let me think about that two to the two thirds. That is, uh, ugh, I'm going to show that in my calculator. Negative 0.762. 
So it looks like this is the lowest point. So there's uh, my minimum, and this is the highest point. So there's my max. And uh, what I could do is I could, I could graph it on Desmos again and check it if I wanted to check. But I'm happy with that analysis. I'm going to do one more example like this. So I have this function h of x is x squared minus 4x plus 3 on this interval 1, 4. And I want to find the max and mins, uh, absolute max and mins on it. And I know that it has to either happen at the, at the endpoints or um, when the derivative is either undefined, critical points, right? Undefined or 0. So I'm going to take the derivative. Uh, 2x minus 4, set that equal to 0, 2. You know, and think about, like, again, I just want to remind you, like, when the derivative is equal to 0, it's a turning point, right? Because that's when it's when it's flat, a potentially a turning point. It doesn't have to be. But that's why we, that's why we set this equal to 0. Um, so I have um, 1, 2, and 4 as my possible inputs. So let me check them out. H of 1. If I plug that in, do, 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 that's a zero. H of two, again, I'm plugging it into the original equation. Uh, four minus eight plus three, that's a negative one. Well, that's lower than that one. H of four, 16 minus 16 plus three is three. Great, so this looks like the lowest point. So two is where my minimum happens, and this is the highest point. So four is where my maximum happens. All right, uh, get this minimum maximum down because we are going to uh, we're going to build on it as we start to think about uh, curvature in graphs as well. Email me, uh, message me with any questions that you have, post them in the forums, and uh, good luck with the assignment.